What do you see in the the eight for the reaction to this idea of near death experiences from like atheists or skeptics? Um, do they do they accept near death experiences typically that they happen? Like, what, what's the reaction that you've seen to? Um, we talk about these tens of thousands of cases of near death experiences, or millions. Or, um, I've seen some pretty affirmative responses sometimes. I have an, an atheistic buddy. I won't give his name. Actually, he's an agnostic, but I won't give his name. He's one of the best known agnostics in the world. He publishes regularly in favor of agnosticism and against Christianity. And he he's one of the first ones that gave me one of the, my earliest reports of NDEs. And he gave me this, uh, in those days, a reel-to-reel -reel cassette, a little uh, cassette tape that you pop in a tape recorder. And he gave it to me and he said, listen to this uh, lecture of this guy who had a near-death experience. He said, he said, this is really incredible. He said, and then he said, you know what? I'm open to this. I'm open to these kind of experiences. But he was an agnostic who didn't believe in Christianity. So that's one. Um, I debated an atheist. I've debated a, I've debated a number of people. But one atheist who's a specialist in near-death experiences um uh, after it was over uh, this guy told a friend of mine that um uh, he doesn't think he did very well in the debate his case that's just what he told a friend friend told me now, i mean i'm friends with this guy so i'm not nobody's angry at anybody but what i mean is it's got to stop and make you think now now i do not this next point i do not know if this is true or not somebody sent me an email and quoted bart ehrman his new book on the afterlife. I have not seen this for myself. I want to make that plain. But if I can paraphrase the quote he sent me, Bart Ehrman said something like, um, I don't believe in hell because hell is not in keeping with God's attributes. He said, now, now he says, Bart Ehrman has said, I understand. He says, sometimes he called himself an atheist. Sometimes he thinks of himself as an agnostic. But he said, I don't believe in the afterlife. But he said, I really don't like hell because I think it's inconsistent with God's attributes, even though I don't believe in God. If God did exist with attributes, I think hell wouldn't exist. He said, I'm more open to heaven. And then I think he said, I think, I'm paraphrasing a book I haven't read, but I was sent a quote. I think he said, I would really like there to be a nice afterlife. I hope there is one but I don't believe in it. So those are some of the responses of people. I've got a, a, a lecture over my shoulder. It's up here on my, my shelf here, uh, right, right behind me. And it is one of the best known atheist psychologists in the world. And right in the middle of this lecture, where he says the afterlife is a bunch of baloney, and he doesn't think it's true, he stops in the middle of the lecture, and he says, you know, I hope there's a nice afterlife. That would be really nice, but I don't believe it. And he and he's an atheist, a psychologist. So I don't know. I think a lot of people are open. They're especially. I can tell you this: if they're going to be open, they're going to be open to nice ones. They're not going to be open to demons and hell and so on. But I'll also add: maybe this will be intriguing, and you want to follow it up. Um, I don't think when religious people, including Christians, when they report. I saw an angel, I saw Jesus, I saw Shiva for a Hindu, I saw Buddha for a, for a Buddhist. Um, I, you know, I saw an angel, and they're, they're a Muslim or a Jew, and they say I saw an angel, and I'm going to go back to heaven one day. When they say those things, um, there's no backup for those kind of identifications. There's also no backup for the hell cases. About 20% of NDEs are hell cases. If not hell, I don't know if you want to call them hell. That would be the short, short term. They're called, in the literature, they're called distressing experiences. And they're about 20%. And um, I don't think there's any evidence for people saying, for identification. I don't think there's any evidence to say, I saw Jesus, I saw Shiva, I saw Buddha, I saw an angel. I saw heaven, I saw pearly gates, I saw hell. If 
because that's not where you get the evidence. If you see a 12-digit number up above your head and you're the only one who could see it and you report it and it's correct, that's that means you can get information in this world. But I don't know if they're right when they say they're with Jesus. They go, well, I don't care what you believe. This is what they'll say to you. They'll say, I don't care what you believe. I know I was with Jesus. And I go, hey, if you were with Jesus, more power to you. But but I can't tell that because I don't have evidence for it. So um, I think we can only have evidence for and make our theories around what is cooperated by the the evidence we have. Hmm. Therefore, See, you can tell all these nice stories of uh, tunnels and lights and angels and comfort and so on. You can tell those things. You can even say, I saw a loved one, and I know it was my loved one, because I don't know who Jesus I, I've never seen Jesus, but I, I know my grandfather. There's a lot of those cases, too. But I don't know that you saw your grandfather. Well, that's because you weren't there. I was there. Great. How do you know? What's the evidence that you were with your grandfather? Hmm. Um, they can just say, I was there, and I know who he is, and we talked. That's good enough for me. But I can't, I can't write that down as evidence. I can't say you saw your grandfather because, you know, there's no, if you could come back with a photograph or, you know, I'm being facetious, but if you could show me you're with your grandfather, but how do you do that? I don't think you can identify persons like that. 